are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sins away. There we go. All right, good morning. Welcome to King of Kings this morning. He is risen. Hallelujah. Awesome. It's great to see everybody today. Uh, we are, yep, going into the second or first Sunday after Easter. So uh, excited to celebrate our risen Lord this morning. Got some 
good songs to celebrate. Uh, I am not Russ, as you can tell if you're here often, but uh, glad to be leading uh, and uh, leading you guys in worship, leading us in worship. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and uh, stand up and start with our uh, opening song. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord above. Hearts unfold like clouds before us, open to the sun above. Down the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Thank you. Please be seated. Please be seated. We've got a, a couple of extra announcements that we want to share with you because of the things that are going on here at King of Kings. But first of all, we also extend a welcome on this second Sunday of Easter. I'm Pastor Doug Chinberg. I'm Pastor Scott Pitch. And we're glad to be with you this morning. One of the things that we want to let you know, I guess I'm going to start with the connection card. Yeah, connection card. Make sure you pull that out. Fill it out and drop it in the basket as you leave today. Very helpful for us to get to know you a little better and share the things that are going on 
a King of Kings with you. If you have any prayer requests or comments, make sure to include them on the back. We do read through those. We join in praying for you and with you in the coming week. We want to let you know that our friend, Lori George, who has been the in and the office for over 14 years, is going to retire at the end of this year, after, at the end of September. Mm -hmm. And so we are thinking about what we're going to do for her on the one hand, and yet also thinking about who will be her replacement on the other. And so we are now opening up to the congregation, if you know of anyone who might be willing and appropriate to serve in that position, we are asking for their names so we can contact them to follow up. So anyway, if you would have anyone that you might suggest, please let us know and we'll take it from there. On April 25th, we're going to be uh, hosting the Circle of Concern drive through food drive. Our neighbors at Circle of Concern are excited for that. In the meantime, and during the month of April, any gifts that are given on behalf of the congregation and its members to Circle of Concern, we're going to match those gifts. We set aside $2,500 uh, from our mission projects fund. So any donations that are given during the month of April up to $2,500 at the congregation level will be matched. So if you're going to give, if you plan to give, or if now you're thinking about giving because of this, make sure you put in the memo line that it's for Circle of Concern and put matching gift on there. And we'll be sure, and then let us know so that we can uh, ascribe those additional dollars to match your gift. We had a work day that was scheduled for this coming Saturday, and that's going to be postponed due to a funeral. And so it will be rescheduled, so we'll share more information when, uh, when that is rescheduled. Uh, but for now, it's postponed, and we'll let you know uh, when our next work day will take place. Seems a little sudden to talk about uh, summer already, but our VBS is coming quickly, and registration is officially opened. These registration spots fill really quickly, so if you're interested in getting your children or people that you know involved in the, uh, signed up for the Vacation Bible School, make sure that you get signed up soon. Every month we have a family event, and we've got something coming up on April the 21st. Uh, we're going to actually uh, have somebody come in and help us plant some plants. And so if you love to plant plants and you want to be involved, it's open to everyone. We would invite you to join us on the 21st. There's more information about that in our um, announcements um, that's, in the, that's in your bulletin. So please look at those. Our seniors group is hosting an event on April 19th. And so if you're interested in that event, there's information on it in the lobby and a sign-up sheet there as well. This coming next Sunday, we're going to have our Shine events. Shine events is our uh, statewide servant event that we have here in Missouri. And so we are actually going to be gathering next Sunday to do those activities. So if you are one who has signed up, next Sunday afternoon is, is the day that we'll all gather together to begin to prepare those projects. Uh, some people will go out and do actual uh, yard work on that day. Other people will be doing other kinds of activities, putting bracelets together to give to certain folks. So if whatever you signed up for, again, that will take place next Sunday. And then we have our a town hall, a couple of town hall meetings that are coming up. Uh, about six months ago, we put together a team of people to look at updating our sanctuary. Some of our furnishings have gotten old, older through the years. And so we want to, uh, we kind of said, let's just take a whole look at what we want to do with the sanctuary. Let's consider flooring and seating and lighting. And uh, so anyway, they are going to present at the town hall meeting what we are looking at doing. But we would like to share it with you, one, and also to get input from you. Uh, that is important to us. So we're going to meet two different times. The first one will be uh, Sunday, April 21st, that is a, a Sunday that we have just two worship services. So we're going to meet at 930 here in the sanctuary to share with you what we're talking about, what we're looking at doing. Um, and then the following Sunday on the 28th, after the late service, so it'll be about 1215, again we'll meet in the sanctuary to have the same town hall meeting uh, for those who couldn't make it on the 21st. But we do want your input and your suggestions so we chose two different Sundays to share with you what we're looking at doing. So mark that on your calendar and uh, please join us 
as we talk about what we're looking at and recommending to the congregation. But that is our announcements for today. We want to give you the opportunity to just welcome those who are near you and share God's peace with them. So I'm going to ask that you stand and take a moment to welcome those near you. If you don't know someone, uh, introduce yourself as you share God's peace. We want to ask God to be with us with the words of the invocation. So we make our beginning in the name of the triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. As we come before God, we do so confessing our sins. If you would join me as we confess together. Almighty and everlasting God, for our many sins we justly deserve eternal condemnation, and yet in your mercy, you sent your own dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to win for us the forgiveness of sins and everlasting salvation. Forgive us when we are fearful of the present or future, or when we doubt the extent of your ability and power. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may share your love and grace in acts of service and boldly speak of the hope we have, Lord and Savior. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We take a moment of silent reflection upon our life as we continue to confess our sins. brothers and sisters in Christ, God in his amazing love for you sent his one and only son into the world to be a sacrifice for us. And Jesus came willingly to give his life and to shed his blood upon the cross so that our sins would be washed away. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said,
And in this one who gives us hope, we confess our Christian faith this day using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. This time I'll invite Babs to come forward to share a message with our children, and we'll see what children we have this day. And are you speaking to the children of God, all of you? Yeah. Sometimes I have someone coming down. Oh, I have someone coming down the stairs. Here we go. I'm so glad you're here today for so many reasons, so many reasons. Okay, so have you heard of the place called Branson? Okay, have you, you've been there? You passed through Branson yesterday? Perfect. Well, at Branson, they have this big museum that's called Ripley's Believe It or Not. That's where they have some really crazy things that you have to decide if you believe what they're telling you or not. So, uh, one of the things they have at Ripley's, believe it or not, they say is a chicken that laid a square egg. Do you believe it? I didn't believe it, okay? So what I did is I went on my computer, kind of Googled it. I doubted it. I found a picture of it. There it is, it's a square egg. Do I believe it or not? I don't know, I'm kind of doubting it. Sometimes people change things, but maybe, okay. So they also have a lot of world record information there, okay? The thing is with a world record, someone's always ready to break it. How long do you think the world's record hot dog is? The longest hot dog in the world. 18, 20 feet, larger than that. 30 feet, larger than that. 60 feet, good guess, is 3,000 feet long. So I doubted it, okay? I Googled it on the computer again. Here's a picture. Mm-hmm, do you believe the picture? I don't know, the internet is not always reliable. Well, today in our gospel lesson, we're going to learn about a disciple who doubted something he heard, Thomas. Yeah. So the other disciples came to Thomas and said, Thomas, Thomas, we're so excited. Jesus did exactly what he told us he was going to do. He is risen from the dead and we saw him. And they're so excited. And Thomas is, is like, wait, 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 wait. That is way too good to be true. I, I, I just, I'm doubting it. I don't believe it until I see him and I can put my hands on his wounds. So do you know what happened? Mm, Jesus showed up the next week or the next day, and said, Thomas, here I am. All right, I love you. I see you. I did what I promised. Why are you doubting me? That's a good question, right? So Thomas placed his hands on his wounds, and he believed. And Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. You see, we have a guide to help us believe. We have the Bible which is more reliable than any internet that tells us the truth, that tells us that Jesus rose from the dead and that he is with us today. The Bible is what Thomas didn't have. Thomas was living it out, but we have the Bible to guide us, and that is so important. Um, 
So the doubting is a very natural thing. Sometimes we doubt things that are too good to be seen. Can you do me a favor? Take a deep breath in and breathe out. There's air in your lungs, right? Can you see that? Do you know it's there? God breathed his air into us and we are here, right? Okay? Believe it. It's a good thing. Some people need to, to question or to find out information, and we know how to help with that. But also, if you need to help, just blow on your hands. It's there. It's all around us, right? Okay. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you, thank you. For dying, on the cross, for dying on the cross for our sins. For our sins. We, trust we trust in your perfect love, in your perfect love. So, we can all so we can all have a place in heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 4. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. Powerfully at work in all of them, that there was no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. The epistle beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We, we write him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk, walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claimed we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus died. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are false, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Please be seated. We want to take a moment to say thank you to all who have given their gifts and offerings, whether you've given in uh, 
online or given here today, whether you've given your time, your talents, your treasures, we recognize that all of the gifts that were that, and so if you would bow your heads with me in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gifts that you give us out of your love for us. Uh, you give for those who have faith and those who do not. You have your sun shine on all those who believe and those who don't. And yet we recognize that you have give, given us so many gifts, and we take a moment to say thank you. But most especially do we thank you for the gift of your son who gave his life and then rose from the dead so that we might be your children and live with you for all eternity. And for that we thank and praise you. And all God's people said, Amen. One with God, the Lord Most High, in hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's the second Sunday of Easter, so I think we can say again, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. This Easter truth, this Easter promise is one which it certainly has an impact on human history, but it has an impact for each and every one of us, because the same way that Jesus died as a moment in human history. He also died as a personal
blessing to you. He died for you as an individual, with you in mind. And when he rose again from the grave, certainly that shook the foundations of human history, of heaven and earth, and everything in God's creation. But he also rose again for you as an individual. Do we live our lives as people who have had the maker of heaven and earth do something so profound and so powerful for us? I think a lot of times we we tend to go on with life as usual and we don't realize the true and lasting impact of what Jesus has done for us. Does the resurrection truly make a difference? Does it mean something for the way that we live our lives? I think for most of us, we would acknowledge that we don't always trust the way we should. We don't always call on the name of Jesus with the power that we should, because if we did, we'd realize we're calling on the one who moved heaven and earth for us, who rewrote our destiny by rising again. So think about the difference that the resurrection makes. Today I want to talk about what that difference is. I want to talk about what it means for you and how it can change who you were into who you are as a covenant child of God. So if we go to our gospel lesson in John chapter 20 today, we look at the disciples, and we look at their story. We look at what it was that changed within them, the difference that Jesus being raised from the dead, what it meant for them. In John chapter 20, we read these words in verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. We'll pause there. They are afraid. They are like little children afraid of the dark. They're afraid of the boogeyman. They're afraid of not just some hypothetical thing, but something very real. They've just seen their their leader, their friend, the Messiah. Or if they didn't see it with their own eyes, they certainly heard about it. Jesus And it was a matter of time before they too were captured, falsely tried, tortured. Cruel and unusual punishment was done to them, and then they too were killed. So all ten of these men are huddled together, cowering in fear. Their mind is not clear. Their heart, believing in God during this time, in a circle, pitying the fate that befell their friend and leader Jesus, And in this book, how do you portray something like this? This kind of cowering fear which cripples and and paralyzes your heart so that you can't do anything but just wallow in self-pity. Well, in my children's book that I read to my kids at night, they have, you know, film noir movies, what's the password kind of thing, right? And they have the window, and then behind the window, all you see are two great big eyes, and a nose sticking out of the little peephole, and it's found. They're, they're afraid. They're terrified. This is the, stat, the status quo for them at this point. So then, this came and stood among them. Like that. They're sitting around in fear, locked in a room. These ten have been up to for the past 24, 48 hours. That they're cowering in fear. Because the first thing he says when he comes to them is he says, peace be with you. And it's not just peace like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm here and you're scared now. You'll notice the first thing he says isn't, ta-da, or I told you of peace. When you look at what this means, it has that exclamation point at the end. It's being used for emphasis here. Jesus is telling his disciples, he's actually commanding them, peace be with you. And lightning and thunder and disciples cowering in fear behind him on the boat and he looks are still. Well, the crashing storm and the turmoil and the fear that was gripping the disciples, gripping fear, this cowering emotion within them as quickly as he, I guess four words, peace be with you. I could count. I'm an engineer, or was. That fear is all of a sudden gone. It's vanished. And the prevailing emotion and mentality that's left, if you look in verse 20, it says, he then shows them his hands in it. To the point of celebration, 
How does, how does a group of ten men go from cowering in fear to elation in such a short period of time? Jesus is the only thing that can do that. The power of the resurrection is the only thing that can transform. We had no hope. We were without purpose. We were without meaning. We were lost in our sin. Then Jesus shows up in our lives like that. And then after we meet him, after we're confronted with the truth of his resurrection, everything thereafter is different. That fear no longer grips us. We no longer cower because of the weight of the sin in our lives. We have again for you and for me. And we need to live our lives that way. The gospel lesson doesn't end with the disciples, though. It goes, he's trying to tell us these things so that we might believe, and in believing we might have life in his name. So, G so John shares this extra narrative attached on to the back of when Jesus shows up for the other disciples. Thomas, one who is not in their midst when Jesus pops into the room, he comes back. The ten at least can cower in fear in community. Thomas has to be gripped in fear by himself. And think about that. He, when he comes back, he, he left that room, and there were ten men seated on the floor in this upper room where they just previously had a meal with their lord and master. But now they are just afraid, and they're gripped in fear, and they don't know what to do, and they're, they're depressed, and they're sad. And when Thomas comes back expecting to see a display of cowering in fear, guess what he sees? overjoyed men sitting together talking about Jesus as if though he had Thomas the Lord he's returned he's come back he's alive again I think they probably didn't realize it at the time but Thomas was thinking what a cruel trick to play on me what an absolute terrible joke it's not funny to make fun of our Lord's pain and his death I won't believe what you're telling me and the disciples are like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. He's, he's risen from the dead. And Thomas says, unless I can see him, unless I can put my fingers where his nail marks are and put my hand into his gory open side, I will not believe. Thomas had the same opportunity given to him that each and every one of us today is given. Thomas didn't have the benefit of being in the room to see Jesus when he appeared the first time. He had to hear it, a first-hand account from an eyewitness. And guess what? I don't know how many of you guys have had Jesus in the room with you, standing before you saying, see the nail marks in my hands and put your hand in my side, but I sure haven't. But what I do have is I have the word of God, which is a first-hand account from eyewitnesses, Thomas. So I think John puts this account into his gospel because he wants each of us reading this 2,024 years later to realize we are in this same predicament. We've been given the same truth. We've been given the same opportunity to believe that Thomas was, but he's kind of putting this rhetorical like that. I need more evidence. I need him to come into my life and show me himself. Here's the good news of Jesus Christ from a first-hand account, from an eyewitness, and will say, yeah, I, I believe that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all in on that. I'm going to push in all the chips of my life and put my, my whole... Con you have the evidence. You have the account, the testimony. Say, yeah, I believe this, or no, I don't. But Jesus would say to you, stop doubting. Believe. Stop doubting. Don't allow the fear which gripped Thomas that led him to, to think it was a cruel joke that Jesus could raise from the dead. Don't let that fear grip you into also falling prey to doubts. I believe, help my unbelief. Do you think that when Jesus showed up in the room with the disciples, from that moment forth when he said, peace be with you and drove their fear away, do you think they never experienced fear again? Do you think the rest of the disciples felt fear in certain moments of their life, probably every day as they left their front doors at the earth for the sake of the gospel message. That's sort of the thing about being courageous, is that it doesn't drive the fear away, the fear is still there itself, right? 
He had another quote, too, about being courageous, about courage. He said that courage is not the absence of fear. It's not the opposite of fear at all. Like, a lot of times we have this, like, false dichotomy that there's, there's fear and then there's courage or bravery. And that's just not the case. For him, it's courage is than the fear that we feel. That's the resurrection. This world, kids, are well taken care of. Trying to make sure that, that we do what we need to do for our spouses. For our... But we can be courageous because we know that in the final assessment, there is something higher of more There's no fear so great that it can over... What's more important than that? What fears could possibly detract us from every day? We don't have to wonder why the disciples were so courageous that they could take the good news to the ends of the earth so that 11 out of the 12 of the original do that. It's because for them, the something more important was Jesus, their Lord, their Master, God himself, that he was coming again for them to give them new life lives, not allowing fear to cause us to timidly cower and to turn away from the challenges of life. He allows us to testify about what he has done so that others can hear that Jesus Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. To atone for our sins, to give us a freedom from the punishment that was ours, and to rise again for us, to throw off the chains of death, so that we might have life and have it to great abundance. Help us never to fear, to put our confidence in you, to take leaps of faith daily, trusting in your promises for us. We pray this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. And all God's people said, Amen.
Coming up on Easter Sunday last week, we see you becoming a sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and for his glorious resurrection, providing us all with hope and confidence. We give thanks for the 37th wedding anniversary of Larry and Leslie Olson, for the life of Paul Scheidt, and after his recent passing, we pray that you would be with his wife, Edie, and their family. Lord, knowing that we still live in a sinful and fallen world with disease, Marsha, Bill, Karen, Susan, Jan, Amanda, Annie, Pam, Roy, Deb, Edie, and all of our homebound members. We ask that you would give peace and comfort to them through ministry leaders and volunteers here at King of Kings. Please give them powers those at our district church of New Beginnings in Pacific, including pastors Joe Sullivan and Dale Ward. We also pray that you would please help all of our King of Kings members, as well as our leaders and our community, country, and world to be good stewards of your gifts and to think, speak, and act accordingly in response to your great love for us. Please watch over and protect all who serve in harm's way, including first responders, people who are suffering in war-torn countries. Please provide, we pray for Kip and Ivy abroad, and for Hattie and Vicki Mata, and people of the book ministries here in St. Louis, of your love, grace, and mercy. We pray for all of these things, including unspoken needs in our hearts and minds, in the name of our Lord and Savior, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Favor and grant you his peace, and all God's people said, Amen. One who is mighty to save, fill you with peace and joy, strength and courage as you follow him wherever he leads to accomplish his purpose for his glory. And to that all God's people can say, Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.